everyone. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a pretty familiar parable. Uh, whether you're a Christian or not, you've probably heard of the prodigal son before. Um, so today I want to read that together, make a couple observations, and uh, then we'll be done with our time. Uh, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11. I'll start there now. And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided the property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country where he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to be fed with the pods the pigs ate, but no one would give him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and I will go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired hands. And he arose and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. He ran and embraced and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the older son was in the field. And as he came near and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants to him and said, and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry, and he refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this is your brother. He was dead, and now he is alive. He was lost, and now is found. And like a lot of uh, parables like this in the Bible, there's not a clear ending, (laughs) which is frustrating. We wish we knew how this ended. Does the older brother go back in and join the party? Um, Does the younger son screw up again later on? We we don't know. We don't know all these details. Um, But this is such an interesting story about two prodigal sons. Uh, A lot of y'all have heard this before, that um, the story isn't so much about the one or the other, but it's about both. Um, You have one son that is very clearly rebellious, who wants nothing to do with the father anymore except for his benefits. And so he takes them and he leaves to live however he wants. The older son stays and he works really hard for his father. And then when the younger son comes back, the older son's angry because his father is happy about it. Um, it's, a fairly, it's fairly well known that what uh, the younger son was doing here when he asked uh, the father to give him all his inheritance is pretty much saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. I wish you could die so I could just go ahead and have your stuff and I can live however I want without having to live under your roof. So it's this horribly disrespectful thing. And when the older son sees this party going on, it blows his mind. He can't understand why, why on earth his father would be happy to see the son again. And one thing that I want to focus on is how the father reacts to both of the sons. Um, you see, when the younger son came back, it says that this younger son had rehearsed all of these things, right? I imagine he would probably said this statement over and over to himself as he walks back home. But as he's still a far way off, not where he pictured having that conversation, his father sees him, has compassion, and runs to meet him. Um, 
And uh, at which point I'm sure the young son was probably surprised that his father was that excited to see him. And he goes through his uh, rehearsed message, like, I'm sorry, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. And the dad's pretty much like, shut up, we're having a party. <laughs> and it's this really great, encouraging message for all of us who have taken a lot of the blessings that God has given us, like our money and our safety and our homes and our families and our friends. And we've just taken them and wanted to do what we want to do with them. And that there's a possibility for us to come home. And when we do, we're going to be welcome. And then there are some of us who are like the older son, who uh, he also distances himself, not quite like the younger, in a very different way, in a way that I relate to a lot more. You see, the older son say, stayed home the entire time. Uh, he stayed where he felt like he was supposed to be, where he felt like he had to be. He served his father, and he did, uh, according to him, which we you kind of doubt what son ever never disobey their parent. Uh, but he says he's never disobeyed his father. He's never done anything wrong. But the father, when he sees this older son not in the party, just like he went out to the younger when he saw him a long way off, he saw his older son a long way off too. It was different, but he goes out, he leaves the party and goes to bring this older son back. And it's this encouraging statement that, look, whether you look like you've really screwed up and everyone knows that you're a screw up, God can save you. And the older son is, if everyone thinks that you've got it all together, but really in your heart you're also a screw up, which everyone is a screw up at some point or another, that God still goes to find you as well. And this older son, we, can, we could talk for hours about um, how deeply we can relate to someone who stays and does everything they feel like they need to do, but all the time has this feeling of resentment built up in them until eventually it just blows up and it's, no one even can recognize who you are by your behavior. Um, but what I want to leave you with is this. Whether you are visibly far off like the younger son or whether you are emotionally far off like the older, God comes to you where you are. He comes and meets you in that place. As soon as you're within eyesight, he meets you in that place. And from there, he brings you home. You don't have to be perfect yet. You don't have to come home having everything figured out. You don't have to come home with some sort of speech in mind. Your father just wants you home. And if you're outside the party and you're not having a good time, and you're pouting and you feel like you're being treated unfairly, God comes out and he meets you where you are. And he tries to bring you home. Um, I don't know your situation. I know for me, I resonate with the older son more times than not. Of This person who feels like they've done a good job and lived a good life. I'm a professional minister. But I still have times where I have uh, these negative emotions build up in me. And I have this resentment of, man, I've done all this good stuff. Why? Where's the payoff? Why can't I have my party? Um, and that's, you're, we missed the point. The older son's problem was he couldn't be happy genuinely for his little brother. He couldn't be happy in his work for his father. Um, but before we go down that rabbit hole, I want you to hear this. God comes to find you. This, is, uh, this parable is found in a chunk of uh, these parables of lost things. We have the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the prodigal son. And in each of these, it's all about how God comes to find you. And God is looking. And he's really good at finding. <laughs> all you have to do is make yourself known. Um, whether you're emotionally far off like the older brother, or if you're physically and, physically and more uh, tangibly far off like the younger, he wants you home. Um, if you want to be notified whenever we put up a new video, you can subscribe to uh, this channel. You can click the bell icon. But until then, we'll see you next time.